Who want one last trip to the long trail? This is a new thing that I'm going to be doing where basically I'm going to be talking about Tekken lore. I'm going to focus on one character at a time and I'm going to talk about just different aspects from the games and uh, sort of how the character is progressing. I'm going to be talking about facts, background, story, but I'm also going to be talking about what maybe they could have done better, uh, what they could do in the future, and just things like this, right? And I want to uh, talk about another comment that sort of inspired me to do this video. It says, I think you should do some character analyst videos. Talk about lore and analyze it. I really like videos like that. Basically do what I'm going to do now is talk about a character and I am going to break down the story, talk about what could be better, what could have been better, um, just things like that, right? But we're going to jump into it right now, but I want to say one thing. Harag is coming up next. And after Harang, I will leave it up to you guys. The top most like comment on this video will be the next character I do. So first, Yoshimitsu Harang is in the top liked comment on this video will be the next character whose lore I talk about, right? Now let's jump into it. Yoshimitsu, he's from Japan. He's kind of close to, was it Mount Fuji? Uh, that's sort of where the, the Manji clan operates and they sort of sort of control that area, right? The Manji clan. Um, he likes Dr. Boskanovich helping the innocent. Leo's appearance, which I found that was kind of odd. Leo's appearance in Tekken 7. Um, games, arcade games, and you know, so forth. Dislikes villains, poor losers, Ganryu, Brian Fury, and Kunimitsu, and also people who harm the innocent, right? Now, this kind of sums up everything that happened to him. Um, all the people who basically had a negative impact on him. But in Tekken, in Tekken 1, his entrance into the, to the Tekken series was kind of simple, right? Yoshimitsu entered... Yoshimitsu entered the King of the Iron Fist tournament as a distraction to allow the Manji clan to steal tournament funds uh, unobserved. Whilst participating, Yoshimitsu encountered Ganryu, a corrupt sumo wrestler. Contemptuous of Ganryu's uh, disrespect for the sumo code, Yoshimitsu stole Ganryu's ill-gotten gains and gave it to the poor. And we see this in the ending where he's riding on the horse, opening up the case, the money's flying out. And what I actually didn't know was the, the guy who's like doing the shock face is martial law and the little kid is forest law. So I, I just thought that was interesting how they worked uh, the law family into uh, Yoshimitsu's ending. But something that is that is strange about this and this is a recurring uh, thing that happens throughout all of Tekken. Why does someone need to enter the tournament in order to steal? Yoshimitsu's only reason for entering the tournament was so that he can steal. But if you're the most skilled fighter in your clan, wouldn't it be just better if you just just was like leading the, the the stealing instead you're like fighting in tournaments and you're busy doing whatever like that that re that aspect really doesn't make sense to me um they always talk about the king of the iron fist tournament but we never actually see the tournament taking place i'll use i'll use um yoshimitsu's uh story in Tekken 2 um, as an example. It says Yoshimitsu learned that scientist Dr. Boskanovich, who once saved his life have been abducted by Kazuya Mishima. To rescue Boskanovich, he entered the King of the Iron Fist tournament too. Once again, why do you have to enter in a tournament to free someone? Why don't you just show up to the building and just free them? Like why? Do you have to enter in a tournament, wait until that tournament starts, and then you have to fight your way through all these, like, people, right? You're fighting all these different opponents just till you get the right moment to, you know, free your, your scientist buddy. It's like, why don't you just watch the tournament from afar, right? You're lurking in the shadows, you're just watching the tournament, and once you see your friend, you leap into action.
So that's one thing that I have against the story overall. A lot of the characters have like sort of made up nonsense reasons for participating. Um, Tekken, uh, Yoshimitsu in Tekken 3, his role uh, basically is getting, uh, it's, it's another kind of odd reason for participating. It says, Yoshimitsu, the leader of the Magic Clan, a notorious, a notorious gang of Robin Hood-like thieves, he entered the tournament upon learning that his friend, Dr. Boskanovich, need ogre blood to live. Yoshimitsu now fights to save the life of the man who once saved him. Why? Once again, it just makes more sense for Yoshimitsu. Like, he's a master ninja. Wouldn't it make sense for him to just sort of, like, sit in the shadows, watch all the fights play out, and then once he sees Ogre pops up, right? Ogre finally shows up. Why, why don't you just go... And maybe just stab him in the back or, you know, just quickly do some sort of attack or you can just watch him fight. You could just watch him and Jen throw hands. Him and Jen is throwing hands. Yoshimitsu's in the back just eating some chips. After the fight, he goes and he just starts taking some blood off the ground, some samples. It it just some of the reasons that, that some of these characters um, are in the series is just like. I don't know. Maybe, and that's the thing too. Maybe if they actually showed us a tournament in progress, because when they say tournament, I think of like a Mortal Kombat tournament where everyone comes in the room and everyone's like, okay, whoop de whoop fight. And everyone else is just watching. But we know that that would not, that would not actually happen. If Jin, Kazuya, Heiachi, Yoshimitsu, Ganryu, Fang, king if all these characters entered in the same room it would be chaos they would not peacefully stand by and just watch these two people fight is what i'm saying right um moving on right yoshimitsu in tekken 4 uh it says as the leader of the maji party yoshimitsu dedicated his life to providing food medical assistance and sheltering to uh to the ever-increasing number of political refugees around the world unfortunately with a constant lack of necessary funds and manpower yoshimitsu was unsure about his future of his organization organization when yoshimitsu heard about the king of the iron, iron fist tournament 4 he envisioned a union between the maji party and the mishima zaibatsu with this dream in mind yoshimitsu decided to enter the tournament immediately he must defeat heiachi mishima at any cost now, this one makes a, a little bit more sense. Hayashi is in control. And correct me if I'm wrong, but I think the reason that the tournaments are set up is to decide who runs the Mishima Zaibatsu. I think that's why the tournaments are set up. So this one actually makes sense for him to enter in because his his goal is to defeat Hayashi and merge Manji and uh, uh, Mishima Zaibatsu. Now, this is something very interesting here. Yoshimitsu is a very good uh, character, like a good, like, I mean, like a good person, right? And for a person like that, Yoshimitsu to get in control of sort of the Mishima Zaibatsu, I think that would have um, extreme changes over the whole Tekken uh, universe, right? You talk about a good guy finally getting into a place of power that was always held by some corrupt figure um that's like that's like if some who's a good person who's a good like celebrity that's like if pewdiepie all of a sudden became the ceo of amazon like that would change literally the world right and that kind of is the same thing that yoshimitsu is trying to do he's trying to uh, you know, take the most powerful position. And of course it doesn't happen, but this one Tekken 4, it makes sense for him to enter in the tournament. That's not like some made up reason for him just to be there, right? Tekken 5, Yoshimitsu, a ninja helping the poor. While breaking into the Mishima Zaibatsu vault, he found the injured Brian Fury and helped him escape. A month later, when Yoshimitsu visits Dr. Boskanovich's lab, he finds his comrades dead. This was Brian Fury's thanks. He shall pay for uh, what he has done. 
Learning Brian Ferry will fight in the King of Iron Fist Tournament 5. Yoshimitsu sharpens his sword and enters the fray. Now, this is another, I would say, this is a good reason here. Um, the reason why I want to say that Yoshimitsu would just wait in the shadows and and stab Yoshi and stab Brian in the back is because Yoshimitsu is uh, sort of a honorable samurai ninja, um, and we even see this when he's fighting Kunimitsu in the trailer. He flat out tells her, "You have no honor," and he sort of looks down on her because of that. So I think. Him entering in the tournament here to try and kill Brian Fury fair and square, fair and square is like the honorable thing to do, and this one also makes sense. Now, I don't know why Brian Fury entered the tournament. We'll maybe get to that in like future videos or something like that. But Tekken Four and Tekken Five makes sense. Uh, Yoshi's Yoshimitsu's reasons for being in the story. Tekken Six for Yoshimitsu. Pursuing Brian Fury, trying to avenge his fallen Manji comrades, Yoshimitsu realized that his sword is weakening. His sword is the cursed blade and retains his power by killing evildoers and villains. Unless Yoshimitsu uh, could restore the blade's strength, the cursed sword would drive him insane. Really that, realizing that he can no longer use his old sword, Yoshimitsu decides to use another blade called Famakin. That steals the property of the cursed sword. He decides to enter the King of Fist. Well, see, what? He then decides to enter the King of Iron Fist Tournament 6. This here is just not a reason to be entering a tournament. His old sword is sort of corrupting him and it's losing power and he goes and gets a new sword. But then he just joins the tournament for what reason exactly it just doesn't really make sense um and this one i i, I think like i don't want to just say his story just doesn't make sense but basically what i'm saying is why is yoshimitsu going back to the tournament the first time was to steal the second time was to save dr boskanovich um he went to try to get blood uh he went to go for brian fury but now he's just going for what reason exactly right now if we look at Tekken 7 Tekken 7 is a little bit different and it makes a little bit more sense with Hayachi reinstated as the CEO of Demisha Mazabatsu Yoshimitsu sent something bad was afoot and so entered the King of Iron Fist tournament as a way of confirming his okay I guess this one also makes sense um so just talking about Brian Fear for for a second I do think it's interesting. Uh, he revived Brian Fury. He brought him to ba Dr. Boskanovich. Um, and, you know, Dr. Boskanovich kind of Frankenstein Brian Fury. He brought him back to life. And Brian Fury kind of went on a rampage. And Yoshimitsu feels at fault for that. Because he, he saved Brian Fury. He brought him there. Um, and even though uh, Boskanovich brought him back to life. Yoshi, if Yoshimitsu never done any of that, it wouldn't happen. So that's kind of why he sort of always is chasing Brian Fury. Um, but the fact that Brian Fury, and this is something that I didn't know. It says here that Brian Fury killed some of his uh, Manji clan members. And that is like just another like stab to the heart for Yoshimitsu. And I don't know if he wasn't able to defeat Brian Fury because his sword was weakening or... Or if he just didn't get the opportunity to, you know, um, fight him in the tournament. Uh, that's why in Tekken 8, I get that all these tournaments have to sort of revolve, all these games revolve around the tournament. But in Tekken 8, what I think they should do is what basically Mortal Kombat is doing. Mortal Kombat, it started off being all about tournaments and stuff like that. But now in the games, there, there is no more tournaments. There is no more everyone, let's meet up here and let's try to like, they're, they're going beyond the tournament. They're like trying to confront things head on. They're like using st strategy. They're being strategic. And this is something that I think Yoshimitsu, um, Lita, and all the other characters needs to start doing. You can't defeat these devils, Heiachi, Jin, and Kazuya by playing their games. You can't enter in their their tournaments 
thinking that you're going to change something. They need to come up with some other plan and, you know, put it into action. Six times, six times in a row, everyone has entered the tournament. And somehow the Mishimas have maintained control throughout, right? And I just think the characters in real life, they would realize that it's a flaw. And that kind of leads us to um, the Tekken 7 story, where basically Yoshimitsu is just sent sensing danger. He's like, he's feeling that like, because in Tekken 7, Heiachi is resurrected, or he's, he's not resurrected, but he, he shows up again, and he's all of a sudden in control again. And Yoshimitsu basically is trying to confront him. And this is something that I talk about uh, a little bit, because it, when you talk about it a lot, it doesn't really make sense. Heiachi literally walked up to the Mishima Zaibatsu building and took control within 10 minutes. When Heiachi was gone the first time, when Jin was missing, why didn't Yoshimitsu go and take it? Why didn't Kazuya go and take it? Why didn't it lead it? Why didn't all these other characters who seen what these guys done in Tekken 6 by waging all the wars, why didn't it, why didn't they what you know take the elevator up and take control in like 10 minutes i get it heiachi is far more powerful but i think a character like paul phoenix yoshimitsu and king definitely equals heiachi's power and they can definitely walk into that building those three characters alone and beat all those guards and nina and take control it just doesn't make sense for these guys to keep buying into the tournaments Yoshimitsu is a good person. I, I read what he likes, helping the innocent. How can you watch these guys wage war on the entire world and you think, okay, I'm gonna enter in their tournament and maybe I get to fight them if I work my way through. Like what? At that point, it's beyond the tournament. These guys are killing thousands, if not millions. But I think that's pretty much it for this. Um, I didn't really talk about Kunimitsu and sort of that aspect of it. Uh, maybe if, like I said, if I do a future video, I'll talk more about Kunimitsu and Yoshimitsu's um, battling. They're, they're back and forth. But Yoshimitsu is a very complex and complicated character. Uh, he, he's also in Soul Calibur. So that's a whole different like story. Like I could have made this video talking all about how there's multiple different Yoshimitsu's. The sword is named Yoshimitsu. How Soul Calibur is might be canon to Tekken, but it takes place like hundreds of years before. Like there's so it's, it goes so deep with Yoshimitsu, and that's what I love about the character. He isn't just some one-dimensional goofball. Um, he has some real story and depth to the character, right? But that's it. Um, like I said, the the top, the the top most voted, whichever comment has the most likes on it, will be the next character I talk about in a video after I do Harong. Harong will be next, right? Final thing, I made a, a lore playlist. Um, if you guys are interested in lore, I put it all of my lore videos from the past year and a half i put them inside that playlist but one thing some of the videos from that year and a half the quality may not be what it is today um i learned a lot of things and the, the channel sort of grown a little bit so if you guys go back and watch some of those older videos just know that you know the audio may not be the best and things like that but that's pretty much it um i did have fun doing this um Go to the comment section, leave a like on the comment, and uh, I'll, I'll see what you guys are saying, right? But that's it. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.